Hello everybody and welcome to another episode, episode 3 of the Ultimate Interloper Survival Guide a series where I take you through a run, talk about all my decisions step by step um, give you my opinions on what I think the best decisions, what our options could be in different situations deep diving into all the mechanics from the most basic to the most complicated as best we can at least So, we're in the ravine, sorry I'm just catching up mentally right now <laughs> to where the hell we are, we don't have a bed roll do we? We just got caught in the wind. We don't have a bedroll, but we do have the hammer and hacksaw. And our goal is we're trying to, one, forge, but two, hopefully find a bedroll on the way. If we don't find one on the way, that's absolutely fine. We can get one after. There's a bed at the forge. This bed's along the way. But it would be a lot easier if we could pick one up along the way. We also need to get the saplings and stuff curing so we can make the bow and the arrows when we're finished. Now, this fire just died. I'm just going to pause momentarily. That means we need maple for the bow, two guts for the bow. And we're going to make about 12 arrows, so 4 birch. I think we have the 4 birch. We have the 4 birch. We haven't put them down yet, because we might as well put them down wherever we put our bow, right? And we didn't grab the guts yet, because we don't want to be carrying stinky guts with us. Once we know, once we've got our maple, then we can decide where we're going to get the guts from. And we'll even whip the maple and the and the arrows. Um, and the birch, I should say. The plan is to hit Winding River. Winding River always has a maple. So if you're in this part of the map and you're looking for a maple, Winding River has a guaranteed maple in all settings. And that's where we're going to head to next. But first, we're going to get out of the ravine. The wind is kind of brutal. We don't really have the fuel to keep this fire going. We could throw a coal on it. Let's see if the wind allows it. If the wind allows it, we're just going to wait it out. Let's cook up this meat. Got it from this guy. This stove right here. Teas, though, we're absolutely fine. We don't need to warm up any teas. We've got some meat on this rabbit. We can start on that. How are we doing on water? Okay, so we like to have two liters of water, don't we? So... Gonna get another half liter on the go. And let's just take these. One half kilo at a time. Now they fixed the bug. Finally. The last episode we had the bug. This bug is now fixed. So when we cook the meat it will remain its normal size. We won't get the cheesy one kilo out of every small piece bug that we had uh, that we had last week. But that's absolutely fine. We didn't need that. If anything, uh it's kinda cheater, but we couldn't avoid it, so we had to just roll with it and uh, be happy, accept it for what it was. So we got about thirteen on this. Because we've got a little bit of downtime, I guess we can... Yeah, we still have the meat to cut. Let's just keep cutting the meat. We're, uh, we have a low harvesting skill, so each half kilo is taking us how long? Seven minutes. And uh, we can do another. Doesn't matter if we overcook the meat slightly, as long as it doesn't burn. Fires are all about timing, right? Check your time on your fires, okay? Check your time on each item's okay? Check the time on the task that you want to do. In this case, harvesting the piece of meat. Make sure nothing's going to burn. Make sure your fire's not going to go out. And so on. Yeah, we're just going to try and wait this wind out. We're doing this because we could save a match this way. We could leave now, and we'd be fine. Take a bit of cold damage, go hide from the wind, wait it out. But if we do it this way, as long as the game is letting us keep our... We don't have a cooking pot, do we? We have a skillet, right? Meat will cook slightly faster in a skillet. Because the game is allowing us to keep the fire, we're going to try and try and wait it out the best we can. We have the cold to spare. 14 minutes, we have no teas to craft, anything we can do in 15 minutes, anything we can pair up, no. We really have nothing to do that's going to take 15 minutes. Uh, what about, tell you what, let's prepare these acorns. Now the acorns are in a really weird spot, right? Originally when you first get the acorns, they're going to look like this in the crafting menu. They're going to have shells on, you can't eat them, you can't do nothing with them. The first thing you need to do, to, if you want to do anything with them, go into the crafting menu and process them. But you cannot find them in the medical like you can the other teas, and you certainly can't find them in tools or fire starting clothing. It's in the overall menu, the A to Z, miscellane uh, not miscellaneous, but everything menu. So you're going to scroll all the way down into the random spot, prepared acorns, and they take 10 minutes. So let's see. Six minutes on the meat, so let's just do one order of acorns here. 10 minutes. The wind died down. It's getting there, isn't it? It seems to be a little bit slower. So there we go. We've got our meat. Got all the meat cooked. No, we've still got a few pieces. Let's just keep it going. 16 minutes on the water. 15 minutes on the meat. You do have to do a little bit of mental math in this game. You don't have to, but it will help considerably. It's not a lot of mental math. Nothing insane. Nothing complicated. minutes we're just gonna pass time for that to get the meat i 
tend to try and put meat straight in us before everything else because meat we can't carry without stinking now traveling with stinky meat is not the end of the world in fact in the late game you're kind of forced to when that's all there's left to eat but minimizing it is useful to help you survive for longer uh, less chance of getting attacked less chance of getting stalked by wolves or bears and we still got time let's just do another recon then now let's look at the weight because i actually don't know this so let's see if they lose weight so it looks like they they weigh 0 0.05 each Whereas the pet ones, which are now in this menu still, they're the same. So when you do process them, yeah, it looks like they don't lose weight in any way. But the ones that are closer to Acorn Cockpit or Acorn Flower, which is eventually what we'll be doing with them. What time is it? See, it's sunset and we've really not burned much energy. We've really not. But sometimes the weather just traps you like that. Sometimes the weather just traps you. So why don't we say we've got all our water and stuff. We don't need much more fire now, do we? For this day, I mean, like, we have the water we need. We cook the meat we need. Since we're not going to really go on much further because we're going to be sleeping soon, let's just accept the fact that our fire is going to die out. We can attempt to take a torch. Well, let's actually add some... To get, uh, you know what, let's add a coal and turn it into torches. We'll attempt to take a torch. Because some of the winds, sometimes in the wind, your torch will withstand it. There are no predators in this area, so it's not there for self-defense. But if we can take the fire with us, that would be a bonus. We're going to try it. And let's take our teas and go. We've got a lot of health to work with, so... So what we're going to aim to do, because it's so windy, we don't really want to enter Mystery Lake. We're almost at the entrance of Mystery Lake. But Mystery Lake, although it's quite easily avoidable... It's still safer to avoid the wolves when possible, and there can be a wolf right at the entrance. So what we're going to do is spend the rest of this evening just figuring out what we want to do with... Um, oh, we can't sleep here because we don't have a bedroll, though, do we? My apologies, I'm a little bit... I play this room once a week, so I forget. Even though we just spoke about it before. Let's see. I'll tell you what we could do. No, you know what? We're gonna go. We're gonna. We're gonna loot out the birch bark from here. We're gonna loot everything out from here, and we're gonna head into the next region and sleep there. There's a bed right near the entrance. If the wolf's there, we'll deal with him the proper way. For now, though, let's talk about birch bark. As you can see, there's birch trees here. These white trees. Um, not all birch trees are surrounded by birch bark, but often they are. And this region is full of birch bark. And birch bark is by far the best tea in the game. Um, you don't have to take any time harvesting it. You just pick it up and it's in your inventory none of that you know it doesn't have that little wheel that comes up that little circle you have to wait for it's just instant harvest and it also doubles as tinder which you don't want to waste it as tinder but in an emergency you know it's extra tinder if you just happen to have it in your inventory obviously you want to try and have another form of tinder you don't want to be relying on birch bark as a tinder for obvious reasons it's much better as a tea uh it's the only tea that doesn't have a kind of like doesn't cure a it doesn't cure any kind of affliction you have the herbal tea, which improves sleep, and then you have the mushroom, reishi, and burdock teas, which cure afflictions. Birch bark simply gives you five health, but it's not instant. It gives you five health over two hours. But this is huge. Over those two hours, that's two and a half percent per hour. It still does what all the other teas do too, in that it hydrates you, it warms you up, and it feeds you a little bit. It's got a little bit of calories in it. Uh, as you can see, I'm sweeping back and two here to make sure we don't miss any. This entire area can have it, so... We're doing a bit of a zigzag, especially with the tall grass. It's sometimes hard to see, so I like to look at it from above and really do a full sweep when we've got the time. This stuff is super useful. And we already have some, so chances are we talked about it on the last episode. It's just going to be one of those things. I might repeat some stuff, but I think repetition is uh, is helpful. I'm going to do my best not to repeat things too much. We'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see how that plot pans out. I can't... I don't watch my episodes over and over. I watch them when I'm editing and then that's it. So sometimes I might forget exactly what's been said and what's not been said. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with recapping certain things, uh, especially since this there's a high chance this episode was a week apart for you as well if you're watching them as they are released. Uh, special thanks, by the way, to everyone who has watched them so far. This is a new channel. It's just the baby channel. <laughs> we just got started. Like I mentioned in the first episode, Twitch is kind of what I do. Uh, we have a little bit of a following on there. Still, still what we do, you would consider a small streamer, but, you know, it's nothing like the YouTube where we have, uh, I think less than 100, yeah, less than 100 subscribers. But, we're, uh, 
we're getting some people watching it, so that makes me really happy. I, I really hope people are enjoying it. It's a little bit different, I know, and I know there's some amazing, amazing guides out there which you should still watch. Um, this one's a little bit different because it's kind of a play-along guide, and we go maybe a little bit more in-depth. Not to say that the others are not in-depth, it's just like... I like teaching the way I play, and the way I play is a very overthinky, very um, planned out way of playing, I guess, for lack of a better way of saying it. So here, once you get here, there's like a bit of a junction. You can go straight to Mystery Lake, or you can go around this way, which will take you around a huge rock, and also to Mystery Lake. So we want to make sure we check for Birch out here, and all the way around as well. And as you can see, there is so much. If you miss one or two, it's not the end of the world. We're not going to drink a tea right now, because we can afford to take cold damage. What we are going to do is start sprinting, and look, we've got some extra Birch here. We might as well grab it. We're going to start sprinting, because we need to burn energy. We're not going to have a good sleeping pattern if we don't. We've still got... We've got about six hours of sleep in us available. It's half a bar of energy. Since the full bar is 12 hours, right? And yet, yeah, it's almost night time. We need like a good 10 hours of sleep. Oh, we'd like to have a good 10 hours of sleep to keep our patterns in check. So, we're going to do this part all the way up to the entrance. And we're going to sprint. We get more done if we sprint, but we burn more energy and burn more calories. But since food is not an issue and energy, we actually want to burn. There's absolutely no downside to sprinting. No downside whatsoever right now. Now the river does have cattails. And after we've done this little loop around here. We're going to do that. We're going to check that out. And we're grabbing all the sticks as well along the way. Any sticks. Anything like feathers we might see next to any carcasses. All these little resources we're going to grab. And when we get to the next warm spot. After we leave this region. We're going to make a decision on. What we want to. We're going to make a decision on what we want to uh, leave behind. doesn't matter if we pick up too much here. Because we're clearing this spot out. Clearing this area out. And you can see there's a deer here. This can be a nice place to come and chill. Um, the, the deer will feed you for, you know, a couple of days. It's pretty safe. No predators. If there's birch back here, then you're doing... Then you'll be doing really well just chilling here. Getting some health back. Some people like to come here just to recover after a bad situation. If they get low health. Or if they're dealing with parasites. You can definitely spend a few days just in this cave. Over here, chilling. There's three caves in this region. One we already passed. We have this one as well, and then we have one down the rope. Um, we're not going to go down the rope today. But we will be coming back there because of the guaranteed stim. Today is not the day for it. We'll wait till we have a bed roll. We're going to make life a little bit easier. There is a bed down there, but we may come down there when we're actually thinking of heading into Bleak Inlet, which it attaches to, which this region attaches to, or links to at the bottom of the ravine. I haven't decided yet though. Because it's a normal run, our focus is the forge. Getting the stim right now is not the end of the world. It's gonna it's gonna waste a ton of energy. Because even if we sleep down there and then climb back up the rope, that's gonna burn all our energy climbing back up. Okay, so I think we've pretty much cleared all the birch bark. Now the only place left to surge is the river for cattails, which we're gonna grab all of them since we have a little bit of downtime here. And there's a train carriage up here that we're gonna loot. Train carriage can have a hammer, which we've already got. You can also have a jerry can, which is always nice to have. They're pretty heavy, you don't want to carry them around with you, but they're nice to be able to top up the lantern whenever you want. You can leave them in loot hotspots around the map. Um, as well as it has a couple other things, usually some scrap. It always has some scrap metal and a few random items. Wait, do we need tinder? I'm habitually dropping them here, but we shouldn't be. We have nine, ten of them total. Okay, we have too much tinder, yeah, so. When we grab these, we're going to left click for the cattail start, right click for the cattail head, do it nice and quick. That way we take the head, sorry, we take the start, we leave the head behind. And you can sometimes find coal on the ground, I think we found one up there when I was rambling away, right? Sometimes you can find coal on the ground in this region, just a few pieces near the tracks. I guess the idea is it fell off some train at some point, that's the way I like to look at it. There's a few spots in the game where there's coal close to trains, or train tracks. Yeah, and up there is where we want to go eventually, where the bridge is, following the tracks. But we're going to check all the way down here, just in case we're missing anything. In fact, let's keep our sprint on, save some time. We've got a horrible wed wed hind? headwind right now, slowing us down, but... Once again, we have uh, a little bit of downtime. You know, it's almost time to sleep. We're just trying to burn a bit of energy and get this place cleared out. It's really not the end of the world. We're not going to get hypothermia anytime soon. 
but we're just going to accept it and we're going to be patient. Sometimes in this game, you've got to be patient. You don't want to be walking around heavy all the time. So that's patience for all the wrong reasons. You don't want to be heavy. But sometimes you're forced to walk into the wind, um, especially when you... Th and then it, does, it, it doesn't help when you're heavy. And when you're tired like this, you're more than likely going to be heavy. We are slightly over. If we wasn't tired, we'd be, one, uh, we'd be 0 0.6 kilos over. Because we are tired, we're actually... Um, four kilos over and we're feeling the we're feeling it we're feeling it but that's okay because when you're tired you're not going to be underweight all the time unless you never let yourself get tired like even close to tired because once you hit half energy you start getting overweight oh you start sorry losing maximum capacity so unless you can keep yourself below 15 kilos or 20 kilos with well fed all the time which is very, very, that is very much limiting what you can carry. But if you can do it, if you can pull off less than 20 kilos and still survive, then you'll never be heavy no matter how tired you get. But that's very tough, in my opinion. Especially uh, in the late game when you get the nice warm clothing, which also happens to be heavy. Well, here's the train carriage. We'll get some scrap metal for the forge here. We're going to skip the tees. We have tees. We can always come and get them. They're not going anywhere. Piece of coal here as well. There's that jerry can I spoke of. 1.4 litres of oil. That's not bad. That'll fuel our, fill our lantern. That'll fuel our lantern. I'm a little tired today. Can you tell? It's going to fill our lantern, um, one litre is going to fill it, the extra 0.4 is another, almost another half, so not too bad. Those things can actually have like over 3 litres, I don't know what the maximum is, I don't think I've ever seen 4 litres in one, so maybe it like maxes out at 4, I'm not sure. This weather's brutal, isn't it? Which is not the weather you want to see in the early game. Alright, let's move on then, we're going to head out of the region now, so we're going to cross the river, get back to this birch forest area. I guess we could have just followed the tracks. Probably would have been slightly more efficient. Either way, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Yeah, I've been really um, struggling to sleep. Or at least, I've been waking up very early. And then not being able to go back to sleep these last few weeks. And I've just been streaming early because why not? Like, I'm awake. I might as well just stream. Um, and that has been good but also very you know in the evenings and very tired and then today i just randomly crashed out in the afternoon i slept for like four hours this afternoon and i woke up and i figured i better record this video i'm supposed to be recording and i think that's why i'm stumbling on my words a little bit <laughs> so we're entering mystery lake mystery lake is a very popular region uh between new players and old players alike it's very it's one of the easier ones to learn the layout. There is a huge forest on one side that can be a little bit disorienting, but other than that, it's kind of simple layout. You have the dam on one end and the ravine where we are now, and the other end you have the exit to the Muskeg and the exit to Mountain Town. There's a bunch of key loot hotspots along the railway tracks and just off in the forest as well. There's also a huge lake with fishing huts and fishing cabins. Lots of cattails, lots of stuff to loot. Some birch bark dotted about. Really nice stuff. Now, there can be a wolf. The first thing we're going to see is these two trailers, and there can be a wolf right here. So, as soon as we get a little bit closer, we're going to go into sneaky mode. Just to be safe. Now, the dam is also here on our right. We're going to do our little sneaky bob here. Crouch, uncrouch, crouch, uncrouch. It's faster than regular sneaking and should still keep us pretty well hidden. If the wolf suddenly came from my left now, I would sprint over to the right, into the gate... And close the gate. But since he's not here, probably get away. Oh, there he is. Where is it? I hear him. Okay, he's in front of us. We're gonna get all the way to the right here. So that we don't trigger him. That was a little bit of a risky play. If you don't know the range. If you don't know the attack range, please don't take risks like that. I did it because I knew I was safe. 
Over time, you'll get the feel for how close you need to be for him to sense you and how close you need to be for him to fully attack you because they have one range where they're going to sense you and start following. They have another range where they're going to decide that they're close enough to attack and once they're gone for the attack, you're pretty much screwed, especially if you don't have a torch. You could try and throw a stone at its head. It's actually quite reliable when a wolf is charging just to throw a stone at its head. But if your condition is lower, the wolves are going to be less scared. Um, if your energy is lower, the wolves are going to be less scared. If you're heavy, the wolves are going to be less scared. At least that's how that's the consensus on how it works. Now they've shut the gate though, we're safe. So yeah, in this situation, throwing a stone probably wouldn't have been smart. It would have bounced right off his head. He probably would have still attacked us. So this kind of sucks because he stopped us from going to the bed. And there's no bed in the dam. But what we're going to do is we're going to go inside. And we're going to wait 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, the wildlife out here are going to reset. They're going to go to new positions. Hopefully, we'll go check again and hopefully he won't be out there. This sometimes this is the kind of situation you're going to deal with, especially when traveling in wind, and this is why wind is such a problem. Is there anything we can do that takes 15 minutes? We have three birch backs. Let's do those. Let's do three of those. They take five minutes each. And that should have reset our wool. And even if it didn't, he's going to be outside the gate, so we should be just fine. We took more damage than I would have liked, because the wind really messed us up there. If it wasn't for the heavy wind, I think we could have looted that part of the, the ravine and gotten out with more health than this, but because the wind really slowed us down. Don't have a flare. Because the wind really slowed us down, um, we, we, took more, we took more damage than we would have liked, but it's not the end of the world. We'll get it back. So yeah, if you're not comfortable with, with how the detection ranges work in that situation, I honestly would have turned back into the ravine, made a fire against the wall, waited a little bit, maybe made some teas, uh, done whatever at the fire, and then come back in 15 minutes later, at least 15 minutes later, to make sure he was gone. Now, coming out this way is worse, because we can't see him, because the tracks you see are slightly raised. So we're going to use our ears here. We'll open the gate, and I'm listening for his feet. It's going to be tough to hear him of the wind. I'm going to stand up to give him a chance. If we heard him, we'd run right back. Now we're going to make a break for it. Run! It doesn't sound like he's around. The bed in here is just like a little raggedy old sheet on the floor. But we made it. We made it. These close calls with wolves are going to be a thing. Oh, I forgot we had cooked meat on us. That certainly was not helping. <laughs> I didn't realise we had it. Okay, let's cook this meat. Let's eat this meat. I mean, that definitely would have helped us not be detected by the wolf. Get rid of the meat. We've got enough calories to get us through the night. And let's do a nice 10 hour sleep. We've lost a little bit more health than we'd like, so why don't we drink herbal tea? Herbal tea is going to give us a little boost. I'm not sure the exact numbers, but usually I think it... I would say it takes you from 20 to 30% to 30 to 40%. Um, I've never been the guy to check the exact numbers for these. I probably should, because I do it for a lot of other things. But now I would say if you lost a little bit more health, more than 30% health that day, drink yourself a herbal tea. It has great benefits. You can see our health flying up the second I press the button there. But I've also additionally added a birch seed to that. And for the first two hours, we'd have got an extra 5%. But yeah, we don't need it. Look at that. We almost fully healed. And we survived. What day is it? We've survived now four days, 16 hours. We don't have a lantern to properly loot this place. Kind of dark. But we do have a little bit more space in our energy bar that we could just sleep. So why don't we just sleep two more hours? And maybe now we'll be able to see pretty well. It's going to be a little shadower. Interiors are always shadower. Yeah, not too bad at all, though. You can see pretty clearly. We don't really need these spray cans. I'm just going to leave that there. That? That I have never seen before. This is vanilla Lopa, guys. This is not custom. This is Lopa. I have never... Now, I know they changed up the loot back in December. I have never, before or after, found an arrowhead as random loot in this container. That must be super rare in this type of container. You can find them very rarely in um, toolboxes. And even more rarely, you know, like the red the red tool chest. But even more rarely, you can find them inside um, inside cash registers. It's very rare, but it's a thing. Both before and after the update, I've seen that. 
Uh, we found a can of food here, not too bad. We're a little heavy, but we're not going to leave stuff in here. We'll leave stuff in the dam. So the dam can serve as a base. It has a workbench. It's a nice place to base up once we have a bedroll, at least. Uh, in the meantime, whenever using that base, we can sleep right here. We're going to sneak before we go out, just in case the wolf is around. And this is a really nice mushroom spot, by the way, guys, if you ever need Risha. It's, uh, three, it looks like we've got three stumps here, but there's another stump over there. There's a bunch of them around. Great spot for Risha. And here's an example of birch trees that do not have birch bark. So you'll, you'll, over time, you'll learn which birch trees are going to have birch bark on the ground and which ones aren't. Let's leave this guy out. Another bandage. We have three now. That's too many, but we're going to fix our inventory once we get to the dam. Still need a pry bar. Wow. Look at all these notes. In dam trailer. Probably going to be a bunch in the dam too. Peaches. Anything else? Sometimes you get a pair of jeans on the bed here, but not this time. Got to crouch before we leave, so we're already sneaking. Let's check out this truck. Every loot spot should be checked. There's a wolf ahead of us, kind of walking away. It's not going to sense us from that far, not while we're not stinking. And we have a memento note usually in here. This one will show us where the entrance to Mountain Town is over by the Trapper's Cabin. We're not going there yet, but it could be useful if you was a new player trying to navigate, um, not knowing the maps. Go out with charcoal and then combine it with finding those notes. They're going to show you like really important locations. For example, transitions to other maps, as well as um, locations for lockboxes, which will usually be, the note will be accompanied with a key for said lockbox. So those are su super useful. Sometimes there's a corpse over here. Do we have it? Sometimes we get a dead guy hanging near this... Uh, little ruined hut or whatever it is over here not this time corpses are random just like the carcasses will be in different spots sometimes you get them sometimes you don't sometimes you get a little random gun book in this not that it's that useful for us but worth grabbing for starting a fire at the very least now the infamous dam dam is a huge loot spot it's got a lot of containers and a lot of the time it gives you nothing or very little but you will come out with a few items. You will come out with a few items and it's always worth looting. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it here. We'll probably fast forward segments of it. There is basically three sections, kind of. There's this section. There's another section upstairs. But then if we go downstairs, there's the rest of the dam, which is almost like a bunch of attached rooms forming one long row, one long row of rooms. So that uh, you can't really get lost. It's just a straight shot the whole way. If you don't know the dam, well, you do now. It's pretty simple. Let's eat something. The heaviest food, uh, the he heaviest food we have, as far as its weight to calorie ratio, is actually the peaches. But we'll, I would say we'd save these for warmth. But because they're below twenty percent, it's kind of risky. So we'll probably eat these right before we sleep. Anything that's below twenty percent, we'll wait till we have antibiotics or a mushroom tea available, which we do. And right before nighttime, we'll take it and that way if we get sick we can just take medicine and sleep and cure the food poisoning we don't want to do it in the day because otherwise we're forced to sleep in the day and that messes everything up so the heaviest thing we have after the peaches is the cattails well it's the soup but because uh, the soup is a nice hand food that we can warm up same with the beans i didn't see these we're going to save those when we can warm them up and my guess is we don't yeah we don't have a can opener so it looks like we're saving them for when we have a can opener so we don't lose the calories either we'll get the extra calories out of them We'll get the warmth out of them. Obviously, if weight becomes a huge issue soon and we have nothing to drop, then we can always leave these cans and eat them later in the run. In fact, we have so much food that I'm going to do that with these low-condition peaches. I'm just going to leave them here. Our future selves will be here, and they'll appreciate it. By then, we might have cooking five and be able to eat all the, all the stinky food we like. Now, we don't have a lantern yet, so unfortunately... We're going to need to use torches to get through here, because we're not going to be able to see anything. Now, if we start with three torches here, they're going to run out before we get through the dam. And then we're going to need to use another match. So, I'd like to bring... make more torches first. Now, depends where the wind is. Wind is going to be a problem, but I think we can pull it off. You see how we're stood in the windproof? There is a spot here we can get a fire. 
I know because I've done it. Just got to find the right one. It's a little finicker. I know it can be done. Don't mess with me, game. Okay, there it is. Okay, so let's... But now we're not in the wind. Now we're not in the windproof. Okay, let's try this. I might lose the match here, but let's try our best. We're standing in the windproof. Putting the fire there. That's when we're going to make our torches. But we're going to stay in the windproof and pull our torches. And then go straight in. Because the wind is coming from an angle where we can get away with it. If the wind was blowing straight at us, this probably wouldn't work. Because our torches would blow out the second we try and go inside. Because of the angle of the wind, we might just be okay. So our forge, by the way, we get to the forge, we actually want to continue along the railway tracks. But we want to hit a few key loot spots in Mystery Lake first, some of which are along those tracks. However, because we want the maple, we're going to take a detour to Winding River and then backtrack. Like I said before, the maple is guaranteed there. It's seven should do it, hopefully. Hopefully that gives enough time to get through the whole dam. Um, we need the maple, the guaranteed maple. So we're going to go there, grab it and come back. We have a lot of food, so... And a lot of fuel, so it's not too expensive to backtrack. And also, let's fix the inventory from the top. We have a lot of coal, so let's just drop all the sticks. And we'll just take three. Because we do need them to start fires. We don't want to be caught in a situation where we're trying to start an emergency fire and we only have coal. Let's bring our tinder down. These ones kind of count for two. So, one, two, plus six, eight. Probably get rid of like five of these, and that gives us a total of ten. They weigh the same as two and they can be harvested into two. They kind of count too. And now we're just going to loot. So what I'll do is I'll probably loot this real fast. Rather than chatting all the way through it. We'll just loot, loot, loot. And then I'll talk about what I found at the end. I'm going to make a note here to say that there are more lock lockers in the dam. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the water from these toilets too. We already have some. We don't need all the water. Let's see how much it gives us because the amounts is uh, randomly randomly generated. The amount of water. Tons of spray cans. We're just going to leave them around. How much water is that? 3.35. 3 so we only need like 2 litres at one time. We don't need charcoal. We're not doing any mapping right now. I can just stay. Trash cans are pretty crappy to be honest. But yeah, we're going to grab the water from there and just put the excess water in this first room. If we want to quickly get rid of it, we have like an extra litre. So if we want to quickly get rid of an extra litre, we just have press spacebar. Or I don't know what it is on controller anymore. It's been a while. I think maybe L1 or LB, but don't quote me on that. We go to liquids. We right click the water and that's going to place one litre for us. As you can see, we now have 2.35. Nice, we found work gloves. Do we already have them? I can't remember. We do already have them. That's unfortunate. We can get an upgrade though. We can also harvest these weaker ones or these lower condition ones for leather and use those to repair the others when they get low. Leather is slightly rarer than cloth. Now in this room there's a safe. I don't think we've done a safe yet, have we? No, we've not, so we're going to go over safes. Safes often have good loot, but not always. In fact, this one in the dam is notorious for often having pretty bad loot. It's very often like cash, or even more often seems to be a book, a regular old book, like a plain one like these. But you can get air wraps in this one, which is a nice warming accessory. So we always check it. They're always worth checking. As for doing the safe efficiently, uh, just in case you don't know how it works, I'm sure you do, but basically you turn until you hit, until you find one. That was around the zero mark, so we're just, yeah, well, it was exactly zero. We had to go all the way up for that. And then we try and find the next one. This is confusing. I've never had to go all the way around to zero before. Normally, you have to go back the other way. Yeah, that was confusing. Okay, so we hit zero, then we go backwards. My apologies, that was weird. And basically, you want to find the three. And if you go past it, you just remember where it was and so on. But what I like to do is I like to go fast for the first half, if I don't know where it is. So from zero to, like, there. And now that we're getting closer to it and we've still not hit it, there's not much left to go. We know it's coming up soon. Start going slow. 
and we can get the exact one. So we know the first number is zero. You got to try and keep it in your head. Looks like it was around 16. So then we're going to go fast for about half of it. So we're not wasting time clicking through every number. Yeah, and we've just gone halfway. Still haven't hit it. So we're going to go back to going slow. Oftentimes you'll go fast and you'll hit it, but then you know where it is. You can do it very quickly. This one's an interesting one. We're actually going to get it first try. Usually that's not how it goes. Usually you go past it because some of the numbers are quite close together, but it's totally random. Cash, pretty useless, just Tinder. It is what it is. If we didn't do it, we would never know. Lantern. Alright, we've got a lantern, guys. That's a big deal. Places like this. See how we had to use a match just to loot this place? Oh, we have a lantern. We won't have to. I'm just remembering we found that jerry can too. We need to definitely dump some items when we're done with this dam. And we have too much energy, guys. So we're going to start sprinting and get this done even faster. Let's talk for one moment about the electric cables in the dam. Do not, uh, do your very best not to travel through the dam during the night. Because if an aurora starts, a lot of these wires will become electrified, and they will pretty much instantly kill you. They'll drain your ha you'll, they'll drain your health at a very very fast rate if you if you happen to step on them during the aurora or if the aurora happens to start. Like this, for example, if you are wiggling your way across, it's easy to get stuck on some of this rubble. Boom, the electric starts. Not good, or the Aurora starts, I should say. I've died that way, I've seen other people die that way. You also don't want to be in the middle of the dam. It will block you off from travelling through in multiple spots. So you don't want to be in the middle of the dam, because then it can trap you in the middle and you have to wait out the Aurora. Not the end of the world, but you know, depending on your situation, it could be quite could be quite a risky, risky thing to do. Sometimes you're in a hurry and you just go for it. Run across the wires and pray. The odds of it starting while you're crossing them are pretty slow. Uh, pretty slow, are pretty slim. But it can happen. Just move quickly if you're going to have to do it. It can happen and has happened on many occasions. And I've seen it live on Twitch myself many times. Kind of low on torches. So when we're done looting this top area here, we're going to go make a new fire with this last torch. One of these last torches in that fire bin down there. Which is close to where we first came in. I did not find a flare. Now this place always has a flare, so I must have missed it somewhere. This big room always has a flare. We'll check again in a moment, but let's go down and make that fire because we don't have much torch life left. And you can jump off onto this and it won't hurt you. Little shortcut. How much health is on our other torch? It's not health, but you know what I mean. How much life have we got left in it? It's slightly more, let's switch it up. Hopefully we don't fail the fire. Make sure we don't burn our birch back or our good books. Let's get rid of the books that we don't need. The gun book. Sucks that we have to spend a coal there, but we don't have any regular wood. It used to be reclaimed wood right here on the ground. It's not a thing anymore. With the old loot. So there can be a flare always in this room, but it can be in multiple spots. There'll always be a flare, but it can be in multiple different spots. I'm not sure how we missed it, so we're going to go up there again. Maybe they changed it and it's no longer guaranteed, but I seem to have found it on every run since the update myself, so unless I've just been lucky. Pretty sure it's guaranteed to spawn. Sometimes it's just easy to miss stuff. I believe it's always in the upper, upper part, but... 
Now I'm not so sure. It used to be able to spawn there behind the stairs. Not anymore. It seems to always be up top. Let's make sure we look underneath everything. Behind everything. Players are pretty useful. That situation, that close call we had with the wolf. Deflect save us in situations like that since it's just it's just like a torch except it can be lit and remain lit in the wind. It's never going to blow out in the wind no matter how strong it is, even in a blizzard. Where is my flare? So maybe I'm incorrect then. Maybe it's no longer guaranteed. Maybe you guys will write in the comments tell me that you saw it and that I'm an idiot. I genuinely do not see it. Hmm. Strange. There's never anything over here, but now I have to check just in case. The consensus is that there's always a flare here, but... I guess not. So there you go, guys. Maybe there's a low chance you don't get a flare here. Maybe it's just a very common drop. You get a blue flare here, though, which they're not as good as the red flares. They basically... Ooh, nice. Do we have one of those? We do not. This is the, the best hat we're going to get. Except for the aviator cap and the rabbit skin hat. But the aviator cap and the rabbit skin hat cannot be used on the inside layers. Can the aviator cap be used on the inside layers? Oh, it can. The aviator hat can. But it's the same warmth as the toque. For the same... For slightly more weight. So, toque is better because it has the same warmth. It does have less windproof. But it doesn't matter because windproof doesn't matter on the inside layer, right? In other words, the best combination you're going to get is going to be either, either a rabbit skin hat and a wool toque. Or if you're lucky enough to find a aviator cap... And the aviator cap and wool toque is the best you can get. So that means for this entire run, we're all set for hats. We don't have to think about hats ever again as long as we maintain these ones. And yeah, as for that blue flare, they don't last as long as a red flare, but they serve a very similar purpose. The benefit of the blue flare is it's strong against timber wolves. We won't be messing with timber wolves for a long time. We're not going to save them for the timber wolves because we don't have red flares right now. If we get a red, if we get two red flares, I like to carry a potato in the trash. Never seen it. These loot changes just keep surprising me. If we get two red flares, I like to carry two flares at a time. If we get two red flares, then we'll drop a blue one and store it and save it for timber wolves. Wow, I've never seen a potato in the trash. The potatoes are pretty new, but still interesting. That's two things on this run. That I've not seen before in uh, regular Loper. Very interesting. Potato in a trash can and a um, arrowhead in a metal box. Interesting. Well, this game never ceases to surprise me. I play this game a lot. I play this game a lot. It's really surprising. Now, there is at the back end of the dam. We can access Winding River. There's two doorways, but they're one way. So we've got a one way exit to Winding River and then a one way entrance from Winding River. The first time you ever go into Winding River from the dam, most people think they're stranded. They're like, oh my god, it's one way and now I'm stuck. It's a fire exit. But there is a way back in and I'll show you guys if you don't already know it. Most likely, if you're checking this video out and you're trying it in the local, you probably know this stuff. You've probably played the other settings enough. But sometimes people are pretty new. Sometimes people are pretty new. Sounds like a blizzard, unfortunately. Might be stuck in here for a little while. Red tools are very nice. These are not easy to come by these days in regular Loper. They're rarer than they used to be. Red tools allows us to make arrows in 45 minutes rather than an hour and a half. So half the time. It's much better than blue tools. Blue tools reduces it a little bit. I don't know the exact percentage. I guess 75% or thereabouts. It's actually been a pretty good dam run. I mean, we got what? We just got some boots. Are they any good for us? Yeah, we got some nice boots. They're not the best, but they're better than what we had. We got some nice boots. We got a nice hat. We got a bunch of like beef jerky and chips. We got a blue flare. We got red toolkit. Two other small bits like sewing kits, whetstone, um, and one other good thing that I can't remember. But I know there was something else. But either way, yeah, we got some good stuff. We're going to fix our inventory soon anyway. We're in the final room at the dam now. So this is where we will be coming in. You can't get out this way. It's one way. 
but this is where we'll be coming in when we do return. We've already passed the door that leads out. And we're going to take this cooking pot. Right now we have the skillet. We're going to switch it out for a cooking pot. Uh, the cooking pot recipes are different to the skillet recipes. But the main reason we want the pot is because the pot can do... Ooh, matches. The pot can do two liters of water at once. So this was really nice, these matches as well. Not a bad damn session. This is why you should always loot it. People say don't, but... Some people just skip it. They go, oh, it's not worth it. And it's like totally worth it. It's just a little... A little, bit, a little bit boring. But it's boring when you're not getting anything. It's exciting when you are getting stuff. And we're about to lose well fed, so let's check out what kind of food we've got. Heaviest calorie ratio here, that's not a can, is these candy bars. They're slightly heavier. Um, they're the weight of two cattails, but slightly less calories than two cattails. People tell you there's no food in Lopa. There's not much food. You need to do starvation strat. Just show them this. Right now we have... Let me just switch torches. We can live for multiple days on cattails alone if we wanted to right now. But on top of that, I mean, we have two potatoes. We've got two cans of beans. We dropped some cans before. We've got two chips. We've got a granola bar. 31 cattails, two beef jerkies. We've got a box of porridge oats or a, a tub of porridge oats. We've got salt if we wanted to make broth of ptarmigan. We've got crackers. We've got, yeah, we've got all kinds of crap. We're not going to run out of food anytime soon. So it sounds like it's almost certainly a blizzard. So we're just going to hang out. We're supposed to be sprinting to be burning energy here. And I keep forgetting. It's weird. I'm normally... Uh, this is normally something I do out of instinct when playing Lopa. But I guess because I'm chatting. I'm not looking at my meters as much as I normally would. This will burn more calories. But we can clearly afford it. So we can't, the problem with this door is you can't hear the blizzard with this door. You can only hear it through the, through the, through the other one way. It's kind of annoying. If you want to check, you got to go out. And then when you go out, you get caught in the blizzard. I think the best thing we can do here is let's switch to a stronger torch. Or neither of them are very strong. Okay, we'll leave this one torch so it doesn't blow out when we exit. We'll check the weather. Definitely a blizzard. Now the wind's coming from behind us. It's possible we can bring that torch out make a fire now i'm not sure how the wind in this game works it might instantly knock it before the wind proof has been calculated oh before we carry on let me just explain what i'm doing right now we came out this way to continue the winding river we want to go that way but because because of the blizzard in fact i'll tell you what we're going to do forget everything i just said we're going to let that torch die out we lost the match not the end of the world we're not going to run all the way around and grab the torch and then and go all the way back to the fire bin and make more what we're going to do is gonna say hey winding river right now is free of wolves completely free of wolves um so why not go get our maple now since we know it's in this region just looking for any loot while we're here we know the maple is here it's guaranteed at least it used to be i don't think they changed the plants sometimes a container here but not this time yeah we might as well go here and we don't have to deal with the wolf right there's always a wolf here in lopa and in uh in custom modes with more wolves like Star uh, like nogoa or, or other difficulty signs with more wolves like stalker yeah, there'll actually be a chance for two wolves here, so it can be kind of difficult to get through in bad weather, but with the blizzard, it's perfect. And by bad weather, I mean if it's windy and we can't hold a torch. Now, this tube, this, the reason I'm staying here is because I want to say this top tube can very often have a bedroll in it. Always worth checking. It's another reason to come to Winding River. Let's run. Still got energy to burn. But all we're doing is following the trail. I'm going to show you the simplest way. Um, yeah, there's not really a faster way to do this. Maybe, like, we could go down, but it's not the end of the world. Just do it this way. Follow the trail. Since we're navigating in the blizzard, it's going to be a little bit tougher. You know, you never try to navigate in a blizzard unless you know the area very well. What we're going to do now is cross straight across the, across the river. We'll miss out on some cattails. There are cattails here, but we'll miss out on some because of the way we're just rushing through because of the blizzard. But that's fine because we'll be passing through here later in the run and we've got too many cattails right now as it is uh, when you take into account all the other food we have. But we'll grab any that we see. Let's cross the river. This is around about where the wolf would have been if we could, uh, if he could spawn, but he will not spawn in a blizzard. 
We will not despawn in a blizzard unless we go inside and pass 15 minutes or go very far away from him. But they will never spawn in in a blizzard. So since we entered this region for the very first time and it was a blizzard, we have nothing to worry about. Our energy is where it should be now, so we're going to switch back to just walking. We can afford to take cold damage. We're going to go right up this hill. Once we find the wall, we're just going to make our way across. There is a cave over there, but we're not going to go that far. The maple is before the cave. This just takes a little bit of wiggling, but we can do it. And there it is, our maple. And we got two, so we might as well grab them both. Let's make our way back. Just take our time. Yes, it's a blizzard. Yeah, our clothes are getting wet and we're losing health, but look how much health we have. We're fine. We're going to get it all back. There's no point wasting energy and calories right now. We'll be more careful when the cold damage gets too much. That's when we'll be careful. And we're just taking a little bit of a shortcut here, a little go. Not necessary, but it can be useful. I'm trying to be fast. A, sprained wrist. a single sprained wrist is absolutely fine. It causes no issues whatsoever. The only downside to sprit to a single sprained wrist is we cannot climb ropes. But we're not going to be trying to climb any ropes anytime soon. Now, two sprained wrists can be really bad. Because if we have a wolf on our tail and we have a lit torch and we want to scare him away by dropping the torch and aiming the rock, well, uh, we're not going to be able to aim a weapon, a one-handed weapon. That actually... Actually, that... Yeah, so... So actually, yeah, there are two problems with having a single sprained wrist. With a single sprained wrist, you cannot aim a two-handed weapon. So if you're just using the bow to scare him off, you don't have a rock or a flare pistol, which are one-handed, then yeah, you can also get caught in a pickle if you only have one sprained wrist. But in general, one sprained wrist is nowhere near as bad. Two sprained wrists can be pretty risky. Uh, sprained ankles can be annoying because you can't sprint with one or two. And you can't climb with any of those. And at times like this, we're constantly checking the time of day, doing the same thing. We're three quarters of the way through the day, three quarters of the way through our energy meter. Pretty good timing. What we should be able to do now is pass back through the dam and get to the trailers, where our bed is, sleep for the night. Now, we do need guts for this maple, and there is a deer carcass right here, but due to this weather, we're not going to grab it, I don't think. Well, it depends which way the wind direction is. I tell you what, if we're able to make a fire near this deer carcass, which is always up here, by the way, I'll show you in a moment we're able to make a fire near it then we'll do it because once we've grabbed those guts we don't have to think about guts ever again we can leave our maple and our guts in the dam right by the workbench ready to be crafted along with our birch it's going to help us shed some weight and it's going to prep us for after the forge so we'd be returning here and remember this exit that we came out of is one way so we have to go in the other way through the window which is this way. The wind is not going to blow you off. The wind will never push you in this game. It'll push you back. It'll slow you down. It'll resist you. But the wind will never actually move you by itself. The wind is never going to push you off a ledge or anything like that. The wind actually... The blizzard actually did us some favours here. By eliminating those wolves for us. Now here's that deer carcass I was talking about. The entrance is over there. There's not much to see over here. Sometimes it's stuck in these tubes. Let's just quickly check them out. Sometimes you get a container. I think it's in this last one, but it's not always there. But because of the way this wind is, we may not be able to place a fire here. Yeah, look. As soon as I come by the deer, you see the windproof symbol at the top of the screen. We stand against this wall, we get a windproof symbol at the top. Oh, we should, yeah, saying that we're in the wind and we're safe to light a torch. Uh, it also means we're not taking any windproof. Uh, uh, we're not We're not losing any... We don't have any additional cold due to the wind. The wind is not lowering our temp, that's what I meant. But here, 
the wind is hitting us. It's also hitting the deer. We're not going to be able to put a fire here. He's going to take us a good over 30 minutes. It's going to take us probably 40 minutes to harvest those two goods. So we don't want to take all that cold damage. Let's just eat one cattail. I'd love to fill up on him, but because we're cold, let's just get inside and then fill up on him. And the window's right here. You don't have to click the window. You can just click this pile of snow. And then we have it. It took some damage, but we're absolutely fine. Now that we're warm, let's fill up on the cattails. So we don't have to keep stopping all the time and eating a single cattail. Let's go to about halfway. Now we're a little bit on the heavy side because we just looted the place and because we're all so tired. We're going to make our way through. I have my brightness turned up so I can see pretty well getting through here. Definitely useful. But yeah, let's get to the other side. We'll drop all the... We'll drop the maple, we'll drop the birch and anything we don't need. And at that point, we'll head straight to the trailer and sleep. Then we'll look for guts. That's going to be the next thing on the agenda. Doesn't matter that we're starting the maple a little bit earlier because the guts take less time than the maple. Uh, the maple takes six days to cure, whereas the guts take five. So we actually have a whole other day if we want our maple and guts to be cured at the same time. But it doesn't really matter because by the time we're done forging, it doesn't really matter. They're all going to be done by then. We're not rushing, rushing. We're not speed running the boat here. We're just cruising. turn the brightness up and you're still struggling to see like I am I can vaguely see the outline of where I'm going still struggling to see just go ahead and light a torch oh we do have what am I saying we have a lantern now easy does cost us fuel but it's going to make life a lot easier and by fuel I mean specifically lamp oil totally forgot we had this we just found it in the dam okay we left some sticks here we left some water here since we're just below two and we want two let's take it and just drop half a liter so we're now at 2.73 let's drop half a liter and that puts just over two if you ever spot these little piles of water you've left behind which later in the run you're going to have a lot of them then you might as well um every time you pass them just top up just top up on your water supplies now we're going to do the inventory so i always leave fuel and food for last because we want as much fuel as we can get within without being silly and we want as much food as we can without being silly without being overweight so we'll go through the other things first and get rid of anything that's useless to us so four bandages is too many i like to carry two just because some wolves can attack and give you a double bleed if you're unlucky we don't want the stim for emergencies we don't want the painkillers for emergencies the teas we want these are just uh, emergency teas keep us warm same with these these are nice healing teas as you know this too clothing we do have extras here this can be turned into leather which can be used to repair our hat as can this as can this but that might be two minute we have no leather right now let's just carry enough let's just carry one leather let's get rid of this and get rid of this these do not need repairing yet but it's nice to always have a leather in our inventory and since we don't this weighs the same as one leather and can always be turned into a piece of leather itself and the same goes for cloth, so we have no cloth, so let's carry look, one cloth, extra cloth here that we're not wearing, one extra cloth here, one extra cloth here, we can tear these up on the road if we remember to, that way we have three cloth. This one's a little bit on the heavier side, so we want to get rid of it sooner rather than later, but not this moment, not this moment. Skip food for now, tools, an extra arrowhead, arrowhead is really really nice, we'll take it with us, we could leave it here since this is where we're going to be crafting anyway most likely, but let's just take it with us, um, keep all our arrowheads together just in case. So that's funny, we found an arrow and a, a, a arrowhead and an arrow shaft on this run so far. Combined with these feathers, we actually already have an arrow, but we need a knife to craft them. Actually, we don't. We only need tools. You need a knife to craft the arrow shafts. So technically here, we could make an arrow right now if we really wanted to. We don't need to, but we could if we wanted to. But it looks like tools are where we're carrying so much extra stuff. So we'll keep these with us. Again, we could leave them here, but I'm not 100% certain this is where we're going to be crafting. It depends on where we find the guts. So we'll just wait and see. We're no longer going to carry the skillet. 
now that we have the pot. The skill it has its uses. It makes some really good foods. We're going to worry about those later. The new recipes are really nice. But carrying the pot and the skillet all the time, in my opinion, is too much weight. One of them needs to be a can, in my opinion. Let's see, what else do we have? Obviously, we need our hammer. Obviously, we need our hacksaw. This is too much oil to just be carrying around with us. So, let's just fill up. And then dump it. And actually, that leaves us with one. So, we'll carry one litre, but we'll get rid of, like, this excess. Now, what else do we have? We have a fuse, which we don't need right now. We're not fixing any towers. Same with the wire. The quality tools. I like to leave the tools with workbenches. I used to carry them around, but I believe now, in my opinion, in my opinion now is that it's too much weight. So, quality tools, simple tools. Every time we get some, we wait till we get to a workbench, then we drop them. So, the quality tools can stay here. Next time we find a workbench, we'll leave the simple tools. We'll make notes. Sewing kits. I like to carry two. This one's low condition, so let's get rid of it. And we've got two good ones. Obviously, reading material, we like to carry two books for reading, and these are like the best two you can get, in my opinion, especially cooking. Uh, in No One Gets Out Alive and all of these tougher custom difficulties, I actually prefer fire starting over anything else because level 5 fire is so good in those modes, so important in those modes because you're making a lot of fires all the time. Um, but cooking is really good in Lopa, so these are great books to have. Other than that, tools are looking fine. We're only 2 kilos over our max carry weight, or our, our standard max carry weight, once we've slept. One flare is absolutely fine. I actually prefer to have two. We have all these saplings, right? So let's see. Let's drop seven birch. Two maple. And acorns. So the way I've been treating acorns on my main run is the way I'm going to treat them on this run. They're nice to have and collect and harvest on the road. Once we get to a nice spot, we're just going to leave them. Because they're not important right now. They're a good replacement for flour and they're a good replacement for coffee. But there's so much coffee and flour in the world currently that we're not going to need these till the late game. In the late game, we can start gathering all these up, bringing them together, smashing them up and using them to make flour. Or to make foods that need acorn flour and also using them to make coffee. But for now, let's just leave them in a nice pile here. So now we're going to move on to the fuel and stuff. So since we're not massively overweight, I'm not too concerned. But we have a lot of coal. Like, a lot of coal. So we really don't need any wood at all. I like to organize my wood into piles. So there's our fur. There's our reclaim. Let's drop all of our sticks. And then take three. Everything's nice and organized here. Too many matches. Let's leave a box. We have 30 matches. Uh, we need 30 matches. No more. Anything, like anything any more than that is excessive. To be honest, we could get away with carrying just one box if we wanted, but it would mean more backtracking when we do run out, and that's never fun, so. As for food, we still have no can opener. I'm just going to ditch the cans. I'm just going to ditch the cans, because they're very heavy. And just stick to the lightweight foods for now. Spuds are pretty heavy, but we can cook these at a fire. And there's also a nice warming up bonus, especially now that the bug is fixed. Pretty sure on the last episode... We had the bug where porridge and potatoes were not as useful because you could never you can't reheat food you can only reheat teas so the first time you cook them they're going to be hot but with the with the bug that we had last week uh, on the last episode that what the initial warming up effect did not work you had to reheat stuff so it meant that these were almost useless except for for the calories so this is fine we're four kilos under we have well fed so our max carry weight is going to be 35 when rested cool so we're ready to sleep there's no bed in here as we explained before and when we're done sleeping I think the blizzard is just ending, so we need to be aware of the wall. When we're done sleeping, we're going to look for a bedroll. There's a bunch of spots. We just checked one spot in Winding River, but I can think of one. There are one, two, three, four potential spots here in Mystery Lake. So we're going to check all of those on our way to the forge. And again, if we don't get one, that's absolutely fine. They're out there. There's a guaranteed one in Hush River Valley. And if we don't get one here, and then we forge... And we craft our bow and we still don't have one. And then we go to Mountain Town and we still don't get one there. Then we'll go to Hush River when the guaranteed one is. It's just the natural order of things. I'm taking my time here watching out for wolves. And here's our bed for the night. And somehow we've already ran out of time. This episode has flown by. I feel like I'm really not covering much as far as like progression wise per per episode but i feel like we're talking a lot and i'm hoping hoping that people like it it might be a little bit frustrating for people following the series right now because you wait a week and all we do is walk from the dam 
from the ravine to the dam pretty much with a few other things but i think for people in the future watching the series back too it's going to be really nice let me know in the comments let me know in the comments what you think about the length um and also about you know the the approach in general if you're enjoying it if you're not enjoying it uh i'm open to critical uh i'm open i'm open to criticisms oh my god my words <laughs> i am open to criticisms so please please uh feel free to let me know i'm new to youtube so this pre-recorded content is uh, i'm still learning i'm still learning if i can get a little bit better but i'm still learning right thank you guys very much for checking out the video if you watched this far uh, if you like the video please like the video don't forget to come hang out on us hang out on us hang out jesus i shouldn't be making this video today Hang out with us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bladescj. We stream TLD a minimum of three days a week, sometimes four, sometimes five, and I stream other games on the weekends. But come hang out. We don't usually do Lopa. We usually do tough challenges. They're often harder than Lopa. And it's, it's always a blast. Uh, we have we, we have triumphs, and we have a lot of failures too. A hell of a lot of failures. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much. Have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.